let's go through the concept of budget constraint in this video and let's do it through an example. So let's say that we consume two goods. Let's say that's apples and bananas. So we have quantity of apples consumed and we also have quantity of bananas consumed. Now let's put a price for them. Let's say the price of apples per kilo. So price of apples is equal to $1. And let's say the price of bananas per kilo is equal to $2. And let's say we have money to spend. Let's call money with the letter M, which is $30 per week. We want to spend $30 per week on these two fruits. Now to understand what a budget constraint is, let's draw it on a graph. So how would we draw that? Remember that on a graph we have, if we draw a graph, we always have one variable depending on the other, just like we had in math, x and y, a function. So let's say we have a function where we write quantity of apples depends on quantity of bananas. So we want to write apples in terms of bananas. Let's see how that works out. So to do it, we must have a line. And remember that the line has the following shape. The general shape of a line is that we have an intercept, a slope and an independent variable. So if we write our budget constraint, what is a constraint? It is a limit. How much can we actually use our money on? Well, we can use it by spending on apples. So the price of apples times the quantity of apples, plus we spend it on bananas times how many bananas we consumed, all the money that we have. So our, our $30. Now let's substitute the values and see what we get. Um, price of apples is $1. So one times quantity of apples plus the price of bananas is $2. So two times quantity of bananas equals to the money that we have $30. Now remember, what did we say? We want to write quantity of, of apples depending on quantity of bananas. So let's keep quantity of apples on one side and take everything else to the other side. Let me zoom out, make some more space. So here, a bit to the right, a bit down, yes. Now we have one times quantity of apples, one times quantity of apples is equal to 30 minus two times quantity of bananas. Um, one times quantity of apples, we can just leave it like that. So we will write quantity of apples quantity of apples equals to 30 minus 2 times quantity of bananas. Okay, now when we draw a line, when we go on this graph and we want to draw it, what do we need? We need intercepts and we need a slope. So let's, let's uh, start with this intercept. What is quantity of apples intercept? That means the quantity, because it's a quantity axis, that means the quantity that we would have if we spend zero money on bananas. So if we substitute in our budget constraint and we say that quantity of bananas is zero, then all the quantity of apples is gonna equal to $30, meaning that one times quantity of apples is $30. So the most, the biggest number of apples that we can buy is 30 kilos. This is gonna be our intercept over there. Now what would happen if we spend all our money on bananas and no money on apples? Well, the $30, we would invest in bananas at $2 per kilo. So 30 divided by two, it would be 15 kilos that we can spend on bananas without spending any dollar on apples. So the most number of bananas we can have, the biggest one is 15. Okay, we have the intercepts that we need. What's left? We just have to connect the line. So we draw the line between these two. Uh, let's do it like that. We draw the line between these two. There we go. So we got everything. Now, how do we read this line? This is our budget constraint. We also call it budget line because it's literally a line. Now, if we look over here, remember, this is a function of quantity of bananas. Now, what was the coefficient? What was this? What was the B, if you remember from math, from lines? This is the slope. This is the derivative. This is the rate of change in the quantity of apples relative to the rate of change in quantity of bananas. Now that's very mathematical. What it means? It means that if we want to have one more kilo of banana, if the quantity of bananas increases by one kilo, that means that the quantity of apples decreases because the slope is negative. It is decreasing by two kilos. So this goes one and this goes down by two. And does it make sense? Well, think of it. If 
we buy one more kilo of bananas, we pay two more dollars. Because we pay two more dollars on bananas, we're not paying those two dollars on apples. And on, with those two dollars, we could have bought uh, two kilos of apples because it's just one dollar per kilo. So I hope this makes sense. The slope shows the opportunity cost. It shows what we're giving up to get one more kilo um, of bananas. So this is the slope. And we can see that the slope is equal to minus two, which is the relative prices. If we take it uh, mathematically, that would be minus price of banana divided by the price of apple. So that's equal to minus two over one, which is equal to minus two. That's all it is. That's what the budget line shows us. It shows us how much can we consume if we go to the extremes. So if you consume only apples or only bananas, and then this slope shows us the trade-off. It shows us how much do we have to give up in terms of buying one more of the other unit. So by buying one more kilo of bananas, we have to give up two kilos of apples. I hope this makes sense. We are done.